What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be previewing 2023 for Port Adelaide. This is my season preview for this year and what is probably going to be one of the more crucial and criticised years for Port Adelaide in a long, long time. And now that we're up against it um, and have had a full pre-season done and dusted moving into the year, it's definitely going to be something to, um, to watch I think for Port Adelaide fans in particular is that how we perform round one and so forth. So without further ado, let's get straight into the big questions. Let's talk about what to expect from Port Adelaide this year. A season preview that I really, really, really don't want to do. And I say that in the most kindest way possible to Port Adelaide. It's because I just fear of what's to come. I fear of what is going to be produced. And I just do not want to have the image in my head of the aftermath of what, what I think is going to happen. And I think it's going to get ugly. Now, I'm not thinking um, that it's going to be 2011, 2012. I'm just thinking it's just going to look like we've just not even been able to tick off any box in 2023. And I fear that. That is my fear. I don't think that's what will happen. I just fear that that could, could be the thinking pattern towards what happens at, by the end of the year. The big question is, is this Ken Hinckley's last hurrah? Is this... His do or die moment, and obviously the answer is yes, because he's out of contract at the end of the year. He's coming up to his 10th season at the club. 10 years without, uh, is it 10 or 11? It'll be 11 years now. This will be his 11th year as coach. No grand final, multiple prelims, letdown performances, inconsistencies, injuries, inaccurate goal kicking, you name it. We've been through it all, and you'd be through every single one of those check boxes. When you've had a coach for that long, the only box he hasn't ticked is a premiership. And unfortunately, when it comes to your time, your time is definitely up when you don't have that box ticked as a coach. Now, for Port Adelaide fans, we've been wanting, we've been needing that premiership. We've expected that premiership. And unfortunately, it hasn't come. Does 2023 bring a premiership for Port Adelaide? Realistically, on paper, it probably could. Absolutely. Absolutely. Based on feeling, based on form, and based on expectation, no. I don't feel it will happen. I could be proven wrong. Many of fans could be proven wrong. And hell, what a coup de grace it could be if Port Adelaide win a flag in 2023. We would all be dancing down the street. We'd all be absolutely celebrating our minds just because it would be one of the stories of football history. The turnaround the comeback, and then the inevitable Ken Hinckley extension. But in saying that, it's a moment that I think would be taken in so positively. Obviously, it's a premiership, but just in such a way where it'd be like, oh my God, we finally did it. it it's the moment of, it, it's climax, it's peak. You know, it's it's the moment we've all wanted. Unfortunately for Ken, I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think this is his last year at the football club. A lot of people have questioned my thoughts on Ken Hinckley. A lot of people have wanted to know my thoughts on Ken Hinckley. You're going to get them. But the time for that is not to be now. It is just, I feel, he won't be coach after this year. And that'll be based on performance. That'll be based on where we sit at the end of the season. And simply, it'll be his last hurrah. No more chances after this. And if, they, if the club indeed do want to bring that forth and have him extend for another year, based on a performance that may say, hey, we get to a semi-final or a prelim, denied. You're denied access, no passport, get out. The one thing I'm eager to see in 2023 is the response to last year, the first five games in particular. 0-5, it hurt. It really hurt, Port Adelaide fans. It hurt me a lot. It really made me fall away from the game and from the football club in such a way where I couldn't expect to win anymore. I was hoping... When you're a Port fan, you've known for years the history, the built-up legacy, and the heritage of our club. It's based around expectation to win. We expect to win. We expect we exist to win premierships. It's not happening. And at, at, at that stage, in the 0-5 period, I was hurting. We were lost. And I was just hoping and praying. When you get to that stage, that's desperation. Obviously, we came out of that and we played a lot better football and we had a response to it. We never gave up, which I thought was a beautiful thing inside. And it was a positive and a negative because 
We never gave up. We didn't quite win games, but we never gave up in the contest. We fought our way back and we fought, fought to the very end. If we can bring that level of never give up attitude, like we did in 2013, 2014, we're winning games of football this year. We're making finals. And whether or not we do damage, that's another question. But overall, we make finals and we give ourselves every chance. The recruitment from last year, how does it affect Port Adelaide coming into this year? Massively. Obviously, losing Robbie Gray is a big, big hurt. Losing Carl Amon, it's a big, big hurt. You know, it, it's it's affecting what we're going to do with our list. We bring in Jason Horn Francis, massive recruit. The first draft pick of 2021, coming into 2022. One year at North Melbourne, ends up at Port Adelaide with a mega trade. Junior Rioli, part of that mega trade. He replaces Robbie Gray. Then you have Miles Bergman, who comes into the fruition for the wing, and Durs McClaims his wing back. Everything falls into place around that. How they all play, it's it's up to the structures and how momentum uh, works for Port Adelaide. But overall, those recruits will have such a major impact long-term for Port Adelaide. I, I feel that, and I definitely agree, long-term is the process, with especially with Jason Horn francis Junior Rioli is going to have that effect and an instant impact when you move clubs, you have that fresh freshness about you, and a different environment just does a wonders for your attitude. So I definitely feel... That's what's going to be the case for both of those. And other people are going to get opportunities as well. Francis Evans as well. They're going to get their opportunities to prove a point in 2023. The recruitment of Josh Carr. Now, obviously losing Michael Voss to Carlton, it left a massive hole, I think, in the coach's box. Ken didn't have a right-hand man, had to do it himself. And we've seen that it can be affected. Having that shortage of staff in the coach's box was definitely a wrong choice for Port Adelaide going into 2022. This year, we've brought along Josh Carr. We've lost Brett Montgomery, and we've sort of changed things around a bit. How that will work, I'm not quite sure. It definitely is concerning. It definitely is a, a little tip of the hat to say, hey, if 2023 goes wrong, you're in the box seat to take over in 2024. That's a, It's a two-part job. One, it's to help Ken with the midfield and really be that senior assistant we're after. Second part, He's going to be coach in 2024 if Ken fails this year. All right, I'm going to rattle off a few quick questions for myself. I've done these um, with the inner sanctum, but I've just changed them ever so slightly. A standout player for 2023 is going to be Connor Rosie. I think he's going to back it up after last year. He's going to be All-Australian again. A surprise packet for 2023 is going to be Miles Bergman. I've stated in my uh, must-watch videos that he is, he is going to be someone that proves a point this year and has his own place in the team. And that's on the wing. We've seen that in the preseason games. He looks fantastic. Uh, my most important player, again, is going to be Charlie Dixon. Now, the second half of last year, he came into the side and he just built into his season so well. His momentum was great and he really looked like he was at home at center half forward, chopping in with the ruck. I reckon he'll do that again this year with uh, Scotty Lysette at the helm. And Jeremy Finlayson will do the same thing. How Jezza pulls up after um, some injury concerns over the preseason is yet to be seen. But Dixon's at the forefront of being that second ruck. And he's really going to have a great opportunity, um, which which I feel he's the most he's the barometer of Port Adelaide. And we've seen that countless amount of times. Fremantle in the last quarter, Geelong in the third quarter. He's been the man that stands up in the key moments and is able to bring the side along. He's got true heart. A minimum expectation for Port Adelaide this year, and I'm feeling like it's a grand final, obviously. that's it's There's so many dot points and, and point two and point three of that statement is we've got to make a grand final. Ken won his job, got to make a grand final. Uh, do Port fans want to be happy? Got to make a grand final. The club's expectations? Got to make a grand final. Win the thing. Like, that's a minimum expectation. It can't be anything less simply because for what's at stake. Finally, the finishing position I feel for Port Adelaide. Now, I've said in my preseason AFL predictions that Port would finish ninth. I've said in um, in the Inner Sanctum's preview that I feel like that we were going to finish sixth. I've said in countless other videos and, and thoughts it's going to be sixth, eighth, ninth. So I'm just going to do an ish between sixth and ninth. I do feel like that's our bracket. That's our window. What's going to come down to where we finish is how many games that we win that are close. And finally, for the fans, for everyone watching, a game that we must attend for this year is round one or round five. Gather round is so crucial to the AFL and having its inaugural in, in South Australia is going to be massive. A massive crowd there is going to be sensational. To win that game is just as crucial to win in any other game because of what 
it is and what it represents. Round one as well against the Brisbane Lions. I've said it in my previous videos that it is a must-win game. Like Round one has never been so important for Port Adelaide to get the monkey off the back of 0-5, to set a statement to the rest of the competition and just grow general confidence in themselves to prove to themselves and to move forward as a football club this year that we are capable of doing so much more than what people expect and to prove that pre-season form is just a myth. Port fans, let me know in the comments below your thoughts about Port Adelaide for 2023. The season preview has obviously been something that um, hasn't been well received over recent years purely because we just don't know where we stand. And I really appreciate the support recently of of the channel and, and you know, the different ways we're looking at content and, and bringing a sense of fan opinion to the game. And obviously with Port fans, you're gonna get that, you're gonna be strong, you're gonna be passionate. So I'm really grateful for that and look forward to seeing you at the footy. Make sure you check out The Glass Table. Episode one came out just a couple of days ago and obviously it's been great to feel the, the love and support and the feedback for the first episode has been fantastic. JT and I are very much grateful for that and we'll be bringing you episode two this weekend. Best 22 videos coming out tomorrow as well and if you're seeing this video on Thursday, it's probably already out. And if you're seeing this in two weeks time, it's already out. Best 22 is definitely coming. And then, you know, it's going to be round one, baby. We're launching 2023 is a go. I'm very excited despite of what I've been saying and my concerns for this year. It's still footy. It's still Port Adelaide. And I love them to death. So we'll see you very, very soon in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Anthony. And as always, kind of pair.